Okay, let's get back to uh, what we were going to be dealing with then for today. And that is the, um, the different types of calculations involving significant digits. So we've already talked about uh, doing calculations involving significant digits uh, using um, uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. I talked about exact numbers. And remember, the exact numbers are anything that's countable. So number of fingers on a hand, number of pennies in a jar, uh, not necessarily something really big, like the number of the people in the United States right now, because that's a number that's in flux. People are being born, people are dying, people are coming into the country, people are leaving the country. So it would be impossible to get a perfect count of that. Uh, well, at least as of right now, it would probably be impossible to have an exact count of how many people there are, but certainly we can count you know, hands, um, eyes, things like that, or anything that's a defined number. Remember the very last page of the lab annual contains all of these different conversions that you're going to need. And as I said here, if we see an equation, first of all, the one is always considered exact. If it's just a one by itself, and if you see no decimal here, you should consider those exact. Or if I've written the word exact. So for example, one yard, three feet, those are exact numbers. They don't have significant digits. One mile, 5,280 feet, exact numbers. This is not exact for 1.094 yards because I've got a decimal in it. Um, and did I say that down here? No. Okay. All of these guys here are exact except the last one. One, lar one liter is 1.057 quarts. It has a decimal written into it. Okay. You do not need to memorize all of those, just the ones I put on the uh, flashcard sheet. Uh, although we won't be necessarily doing this by hand all the time, do remember that when you have a number to the X power, times the same number to the y power, you always add the exponents. So 10 to the x times 10 to the y is 10 to the x plus y. If you divide the same number to the uh, a power by that number to the b power, in this case 10, you subtract the exponents. This only works, of course, if it's the same number. If this was 10 to the a, 9 to the b, you couldn't do that. These have to be the same number. I posted a video. I'm hoping everyone saw my announcement um, on chem class. Scientific notation in your calculator. You all should have gotten an email. Um, if you didn't, double check your real Honda email. You need to be checking that at least a couple times a day. Um, and it went, I went through this next topic because you need to be a master at entering in scientific notation into your calculator, doing multiplication and division. Um, to save time, I'm not gonna cover that topic right now. As I said, it's already a video. Scientific notation in your calculator if you haven't watched it. You do need to do that though, because that will be some of the stuff that comes up today and on the exams. So I'll leave that to you to, to do. What I really wanna focus on today is units. That's gonna be a really big deal. And so what do we use units for? They tell us the type of measurement that you're taking. So distance, time, energy, uh, speed, uh, let's see, all kinds of things, volume. So the type of measurement that you're making and also the general size of that measurement. Um, so for example, while we can use inches to measure distance, if we want to measure a person's height, inches or feet would make sense. What other kinds of units would make sense to measure a person's height? Centimeters. Centimeters would make sense too. Good. Anything else? Meters. Meters would probably make sense too. 
what length unit would not make sense to measure a person's height? Miles. Miles. Millimeters. Someone could do it, but you know, I mean, it, it would be kind of kind of weird. Light years. You know, you probably wouldn't use light years to measure someone's height. How many light years you are tall? Millimeters is doable, but probably doesn't. Millimeters makes more sense than miles, but not by much. Okay. Um, yeah. So feet, centimeters, inches. Those all would make sense. Meters. All right. So we have different sizes depending on the magnitude of the measurement that we're trying to make. Now we have a couple systems that are in use, and this is a uniquely, well, not uniquely, but almost uniquely an American problem because we are stubborn and we don't like to give up our units that we've been using. You know, we charge ahead and say, America, everything we do is always right. So sorry, a little bit cynical there. But um, so we still, unfortunately, because of that, we still use two systems of units while most of the world has moved on. So we still use inches and feet and miles for measuring lengths. Well, you know, if you go to Canada, for example, what do they use to measure distances on the road? Kilometers? Kilometers. Yeah. Anyone else know in any other country? What they're, if they're, I'm assuming almost everybody else uses kilometers. Does anyone know other nations, what they use? They can measure, tell me that they've been to. In okay. Mexico, all countries yep. except three, including United States, um, my uh, two other African countries, I believe, that follow our. They're still using that? Yeah, there are three countries that still use these. I know, you know, so us. Myanmar and Liberia, those three, at least last time I checked, which was like 20 years ago. But does Mexico still use miles? Oh, I meant like kilometers. Oh, okay, kilometers. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know England uses kilometers and I know Canada uses kilometers. So I believe most of Europe uses kilometers. So it's popular, but what's the problem with it? The problem with the English system is really clear if we just go and look at the units here, because most of these are our English units here. So for example, I'll get rid of this in a minute. Uh, those are all English, one foot, 12 inches, one yard, three feet, one mile, 5,280. Uh, these are all English right here. What's the problem with dealing with this system? Is it because it isn't as accurate as a metric system? It's not accurate. That's that's a, a good guess. It's not so much accurate. Pound also here. It's because the numbers are totally inconsistent, right? The only way you can really use this system is by memorizing a ton of numbers. And there's not usually a rhyme or reason to a lot of those numbers. Um, on the other hand, the metric system or the SI system of units, as we'll call it, is all based around the number 10, or technically the number one, because, um, well, no, we'll say 10. Everything is based around 10, okay? And the systems of units work the same, essentially, regardless of what type of measurement you're taking, whether you're taking uh, distance measurements or volume measurements, the, the way it works is, is pretty consistent. So because of consistency, uh, it makes it a much easier system to, to get familiar with. So SI, also called the International System, and I believe that's exactly the same as calling it the metric system. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Bless you. Oh. Bless you. Thank Bless you. I appreciate it. Mm. Okay. So in order to use the SI system of units, really all you have to know is what type of measurement you're taking, which is included in the name of the measurement and the magnitude of it. So those are the two things that are included in the measurements. So for example, when you see centimeter, the centi part tells you the approximate magnitude, how, si how big the measurement is, and meter tells you that you're measuring length. If you heard of us, we don't usually use it, but a centisecond, a centisecond would again tell you the magnitude, a second would tell you that you're measuring time. 
Okay. And so, as I already showed you last week, these words are always what appear second in all of these names, or they appear on their own. So, for example, we have meters, and then we have a whole bunch of units derived from the meter, kilometers, centimeters, millimeters, micrometers, and anytime it ends in the word meter, we know you're measuring length. Unlike mile, foot, inch, you know, where the word is totally inconsistent and you just have to know from experience that that means you're measuring length. Mass, they all end in gram, okay? Uh, so grams are your base unit. And then we have kilograms, centigrams, milligrams, micrograms, etc. I have, I think, everything here except luminosity, which is measured in candelas. And we'll never have a reason to use candelas in this class. So that's why I kind of left them off the chart. Um, but pretty much all the SI units are here. Now, again, I'm using, I think I'd mentioned last week, the base units. In other words, that's the word that's going to appear in all the units. Some people say that these are also the SI units, which is not entirely true. These are the SI units except for gram, um, which is kilogram for the SI unit. So instead of using the phrase SI unit, I just call these the base units. Okay. And then we append to those, to the front of them, a prefix if we need to, to indicate the magnitude. So I already told you these are the ones that you need to know. And um, I believe that if we go and we look at the flashcard set on chem class, that for example, I did this for all the, the meter ones. There's, there's your kilo, deci, centi, milli, micro, et cetera. Now there are other ones, as you see, that I didn't require you to learn like Terra, Giga, and that's not because they're not important. They're just not really used in chemistry a lot. Same thing with Hecto and Deca. Uh, we don't technically uh, usually use them. So these are the ones that we will use quite often. And you'll see that today. So the first set of units that I want us to get comfortable dealing with are just temperature because they're, they're pretty easy uh, to deal with. Uh, and we'll start them here and then we'll talk about converting them a little bit later. Uh, so temperature is measure of what we call the average kinetic energy of a body. As we get further into talking about energy in chemistry, what that means is at higher temperatures, the particles that make up a substance have greater motion, have greater movement. So for example, if you have water at one degree Celsius versus water at 99 degrees Celsius, the particles at the higher temperature are moving a lot more rapidly. The particles are called molecules, something that we'll define in the next couple chapters. But it's just telling you what the average is of how fast these things are measuring. It's not the same thing as heat. It's a common uh, misconception, but we'll worry more about the distinction between temperature and heat later on, okay? What temperature really is, is it's a signpost. It tells you which way heat is going to go. Whenever something is at a higher temperature than something else, heat always goes in the direction from the higher temperature to the lowest temperature, it always flows that way. Now we have three units that um, are commonly used for measuring temperatures. Fahrenheit, which we again, really only use, um, I wanted to say in the US, but uh, I was watching a, a video yesterday, um, a guy who keeps tarantulas. I don't, I'm not a tarantula enthusiast, but for some reason I like watching YouTube videos of them. Um, and he was talking all of his temperatures of where he keeps his tarantulas in Fahrenheit. And um, unless he's just faking a British accent to entertain us all, um, I'm quite sure he's in Britain and he was talking in Fahrenheit. So maybe that's an issue that's particular to that hobby. Um, but we typically don't use Fahrenheit for anything other than saying what the temperature is outside. 
um, when you're talking about the weather. That's about it. Virtually all the measurements we're going to be doing in this class, uh, anything that we where we take the measurement ourselves is going to be done in Celsius. Um, and Celsius, as we'll see in just a second, is based on water. Kelvin, on the other hand, is going to be our SI unit of temperature. Although we won't use a Kelvin thermometer, there are going to be a lot of times where we have to do temperatures in Kelvin for calculations to work, particularly when we're dealing with gases. Uh, the difference between these scales is that Fahrenheit and Celsius have positive and negative temperatures, okay? Kelvin does not have any negative temperatures. What it was done in developing the Kelvin system is we found, well, what is the absolute lowest temperature we could theoretically get to? And we called that temperature zero. There is no negative. You can't get lower than zero Kelvin. And in fact, at this point in time, it's not, po I, in fact, I don't think it's a matter of this point in time. I think it's theoretically impossible to even get to zero Kelvin. We've gotten very, very, very close, but I don't think it's possible uh, to actually hit zero Kelvin. And if you can't get to that, you can't get below it either. Okay, so let's just, as a point of reference, use water um, for some of these temperatures here. So first of all, as I said, Celsius is based on the freezing point and the boiling point of water. These values you should know by memory. You should know that the freezing point of water is at sea level, what in Celsius? Freezing point of water at Celsius is zero. And the boiling point of water would be what? 100. 100, very good. So that's not a nice coincidence. That's how Celsius was defined. Now, Fahrenheit, on the other hand, God, I remember listening to the story of Fahrenheit recently, and it was so bizarre and convoluted as to how they came up with the temperatures that I'm not going to retry to tell it here. Uh, but the freezing point, you should know the freezing point just from experience. Nothing that'll come up on an exam. Does anyone know the freezing point of water in Fahrenheit? You would know if you lived in the Midwest, probably. But living in California, there's not really a reason to know it. It is... 32? 32, yeah. And then the boiling point, you probably don't know. But if you do, great. It is 212 Fahrenheit. And then Kelvin, um, the freezing point of water would be 273 Kelvin. I don't know why I'm in this. And the boiling point would be 373 Kelvin. Note that we don't use a... Decimal. Yeah, there's no degree sign. With Kelvin. Now, you should maybe see a really important observation. Compare Celsius and Kelvin, and what do they have in common? There's a big thing that they have in common. Both 500. Exactly. It takes 100 degrees Celsius to go from the freezing point of water to the boiling point. It takes 100 um, units of Kelvin to go from the freezing point to the boiling point. So in other words, the size of the degree is the same. Okay. Same size of degree. So you'll want to make a note here. If you go up by one degree Celsius, you always go up by one degree Kelvin. Uh, if you go up by five degrees Celsius, you go up by five units of Kelvin. That's always how that works. The freezing point on the other, uh, the uh, Fahrenheit temperatures on the other hand are 
a little bit more sensitive. Uh, let me pull up real quick the um, chapter two. Oh, where do they go? Sorry, for some reason, this doesn't always save the most recent file. So let me pull that up real quick. Here we are. So if we look kind of carefully here at the pictures of the degrees, you see again that these are about these are the same size of degrees when we talk about Celsius and Kelvin. Fahrenheit, the degrees are smaller. And that's because in order to get from 32 to 212, you have to go up by 180 degrees. All right, so abandon Fahrenheit, uh, except for when I talk about doing Fahrenheit to Celsius conversions a little bit later. All right, now we get into the heart of what we're looking at today. By far the most important point of what we are gonna deal with today, and that's converting from by units. So let's take an equality. So you agree whenever you have this symbol, we know that's called an equal sign. Let's respect the equal sign. What does the equal sign always mean? It means that whatever on the left and whatever's on the right is the same. Exactly the same in every way. Um, in other words, they mean exactly the same distance, exactly the same, or exactly the same value, but they represent exactly the same thing. So let's take a measurement. I could measure a certain distance, and let's say that that distance was one foot in length. That is exactly the same distance if you measured it in inches, if it were 12 inches. Now, obviously, one and 12 don't equal each other, right? No. But when you append the unit, one foot and 12 inches, that makes this statement true. One foot is the same distance as 12 inches. Yeah. So that's what an equal sign requires. It's the same type of unit. So length and length. And they must measure the exact same uh, of that unit. So distance here. So this is an equation right here. Now we all know from algebra, that with an equation, you can divide both sides by any number except zero, and that will leave the value the same. So for example here, oops, why can't I go into slideshow mode here? Let's say we divide both sides by not 12, but by 12 inches. I'm gonna take the unit with me. For now, I want you to think of these just like variables. So just like this was a letter X and this was a letter Y in algebra. Units work the same way as variables do. Okay. And you will notice that if you divide both sides by 12 inches, on the left side, you get one foot over 12 inches. On the right side, you get 12 over 12, which we know is one, right? And inches over inches, again, they work just like variables. So just like X over X, X divided by X would be one, okay? One times one, one times one, this is one. So you'll notice that this thing on the left here, which is just one side of the equation divided by the other. This is what's gonna be called a conversion factor. And it is exactly equivalent to multiplying by one. What is the special thing about one? One is very special because it is the number that when you multiply by it, it doesn't change something. 
So what is the whole point then of a conversion factor? A conversion factor changes the unit, but it doesn't change the measurement itself. Does that make sense? It allows you to go from one unit to another, but it keeps the actual same measurement, just in a different unit. This conversion factor as written would be used to convert inches to feet. You can tell that because the unit you want to start that you that you're starting with will always be in the denominator and the unit you want to end with will always be in the numerator. Okay. So if I write that out um, right here And we can abbreviate if we want. So that's 12 inches over 12 inches. Where of course, since these are the same, they cancel. So this would equal one. All right, so that's what a conversion factor is right here. This thing is called a conversion factor. And specifically, it is a conversion factor from whatever's in the denominator, from inches to whatever is in the numerator, feet. That's the other problem with the SI unit. We have to actually change the word foot to feet. You don't have to do that with meters and you know they don't change spellings or anything like that. What would be the conversion factor of, uh, actually, I think, do I have it written down here? Yeah, I do. Okay. So as we saw, this one goes from inches to feet. The conversion factor on the left starts with feet. So it would go from feet into Two inches. You can do this with any equation like these, okay? Or you can do it with, uh, I'm going to do it later with uh, equalities. Equalities will be uh, things that are different types of units but represent the same thing. Um, for example, um, Let's say that a can of paint costs $2. You could say one can of paint is equivalent to $2. Of course it doesn't. What do they cost now, like 50 something dollars? So you can't use an equal sign because those would be different types of units, but you can use equivalent. And I'll use three lines for that. I'll talk about that in a minute. You can do this again, going to the last page of the notes. What page are we on right now? 21, okay. For any of these right here. So, for example, if you want to go from uh, liters to quarts, what could you do? What would be the equation from liters to quarts? From liters to quarts, the from unit goes in the numerator or the denominator. The unit you're starting with always goes in the Denominator. Denominator and the unit you want goes in the numerator. Numerator. Very good. So we would put what would the conversion factor look like? It would be the unit you want in the numerator, 1.057 quarts. And the unit you're starting with is one liter. 
What if you wanted to go from PSI to atmospheres? Here's an equation for that. So from PSI to atmospheres would mean that if we want atmospheres at the end, atmospheres goes in the numerator. And the unit you're starting with would be PSI, which is what is PSI in words? Anyone know? Your tire uses PSI. Pressure per square inch. Uh, pressure per square inch. Very good. Yeah. I'm sorry. No. Pounds per square inch. Pounds. Sorry. Per... <laughs> you're fired. So, no, I'm kidding. That's fine. Good. So, you can construct them out of any of these guys right here on the top. Um, I'll eventually go back and erase these, but uh, so these are all equal equations, right? And they're all easily uh, written into conversion factors. All right. Now, let's say we wanted to actually put this to use. Convert 18.5 feet to inches. Now, some people can go, oh, that's really easy. I just multiply by 12. You never want to think of it that way because these problems will often involve multiple sequences of steps. And so just because we're starting with one that's easy that we could do in our heads doesn't mean that that's the best way to, uh, to do it for right now. So let's say I want to go from feet to inches. The conversion factor I'm going to want is the one on the left, right? From feet to inches. The unit we want is right there. So I would say, let's start by 18.5 feet. And we always multiply by our conversion factors. So I'm gonna have one foot which we can abbreviate as FT in the denominator and 12 inches in the numerator. Before you even get your calculator out, you wanna be really train yourself well on this. Check that the units, which units cancel. So we have feet times this. So this means feet is in the numerator, right? If you don't see a denominator, whatever you have is in the numerator. So feet cancels feet. And then we get out our calculator and we say, all right, I have 18.5. Hold on, my calculator is being uncooperative, I think. Oh, there it is, 18.5 times 12, I think it's 222 is 222 inches. That's the calculator answer. And now let's do significant digits. 18.5 is a measurement. So how many significant digits does it have? Three, and then 12 and one are, what did we call them? They are exact. So I'll put little X's on them. If they're exact, that means ignore them for significant digits. So the only numbers with significant digits here are three, right? Ignore these. So the smallest number you have is three. This is already three significant digits. So we're fine. 18.5 is the speed is the same as 222 inches. Any questions about that? Can we call it sig figs? Um, what did I say? Um, sorry, I was, I was writing down a note. Can I call it sig figs? Absolutely. I call it four different things. Significant digits, significant figures, sig digs, and sig figs. And on an exam, if you see this, 
that means you made an error on sig not San Diego, but significant digits. Okay. So I'll usually use SD uh, when the significant digits are wrong. Yeah. But don't call them SDs because then I'll have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. But sig figs, sig digs, those are all fine. Now, let's say that we want to do this using SI units. Initially, this is a little bit harder. Let me go back to my PowerPoint for this part, I think. Yeah. Okay. What you have to know, absolutely, when you're doing this is the power of 10 that corresponds to each prefix. And you have to be able to write relationships between the prefixed unit and its base in two different ways. Um, actually, I don't wanna use the PowerPoint. Let me just go back to my notes. So there's a couple different ways we can write centimeters to meters. Okay. We could write it like this, one centimeter equals 10 to the minus two meters. Or we could write it like this, 10 squared centimeters equals one meter. For the most majority of the time, I'm gonna use the top one. And let me explain very clearly, and I'll say this 8 million times tonight, today, okay? In the SI system, The best and most reliable way not to get this wrong, because I warn you, this is the biggest mistake that I see on the first exam, and it can easily bring someone from an A to a D, because people make this mistake over and over and over. So this is the most important thing to note, all, all getting ready for this exam. It is so important. Don't mess this up. In the SI system, I would say the best way I don't know if that's the word I want to use. To write conversion factors is as follows. So to put a one in front of the unit with the prefix, and put the, <clears throat> the meaning of the prefix on the other side, meaning the denominator, the numerator, et cetera. So let's be very clear on how I did that. Give you a second to write that down if you want. So that's what I've done here. Centimeters, meters, right? Centimeters, meters. Which side has the prefix? Centimeters, right? Prefix is centi. So you want to put the one on that side. And then what does the prefix mean? 10 to the minus two. Put it on the other side. 
If you do it that way, it will never be wrong. Never. Assuming you know, you know, you know that centi is 10 to the minus two. It will never be wrong. Sometimes there are more convenient ways to do it, though. But this way always works, and you won't make an error if you do it this way. But you might make a calculator error. So long as you don't screw things up with the calculator, you'll be fine. Now, the other way you can do that is, and let me explain why. I want to read this. This says one. What does centi mean in words? Centi means hundredth, right? Centi means 0 0.01 meters. Centi means 10 to the minus two. So centi means 10 to the minus two. So what do we have then on the left side? 10 to the minus two meters equals 10 to the minus two meters. They are truly equal. Now, you could divide, if you wanted, both sides by 10 to the negative 2. If you divide both sides by 10 to the negative 2, that would put a 1 on this side, right? And on this side, it would become 10 to the positive 2. That's because 1 is 10 to the 0, 10 to the 0 over 10 to the... 2 minus 2 is 10 to the positive 2. So this is the alternate way. I don't recommend using it because you're very likely to get it wrong. The only times I want you to use the alternate way is I will, I actually specifically tell you to memorize them. Okay. And they were on the uh, flashcard list. And there's only a few of those where it's better to memorize the alternate. So this is more confusing. Why does this work? Well, this is 10 to the positive 2. What does centi mean? A hundredth. Yeah, which is 10 to the... Negative 2. Negative 2. See, that's all C is doing. The little C is standing in for the number 10 to the minus two. What's 10 to the two times 10 to the minus two? You add them. It's 10 to the zero. Which is? One. 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 Yeah. So that is one meter. Now, what I need you to be very good at doing is making sure you're not getting this backwards. So, for example, is this true? No. No. And this is where everybody, well, not everybody, where a lot of people will not succeed is because they will get these wrong. They will get them backwards. This is totally wrong. This is saying 10 to the minus 2 times 10 to the minus 2 meters is 1. 10 to the minus 2 times 10 to the minus 2 is 10 to the minus 4. 10 to the minus 4 meters is not 1 meter. This is totally wrong. So that's why I said you want to be consistent. And the way I want you to do it is this way. The problem is that sometimes the book prefers to use both ways. And I strongly prefer, even though it's more tedious in some cases, to do it this way. Because you will never get it wrong if you do it this way. So a one goes in front of the unit with the prefix. And then the prefix's definition goes on the other side. All right. The only exceptions that I recommend to that are memorizing these ones right here. Um, where did I put them? 
Uh, let's see. A meter is a hundred centimeters. Um, a meter is a thousand millimeters. So those, it's just more, and a centimeter is, uh, it's these four. These are all correct. It's just that all of these, these guys put a one in front of the, the meter, not the one in front of the unit with the prefix. And that's because you're going to use them so often, it's just faster to do it this way. But you can always do it this way, as I said, and you'll never be wrong if you do it this way. So remember this, we are at 1030. So this is about 50 minutes into the video lecture. Don't, you don't want to mess this part up. Okay, so I could use any of these conversions, but I'm going to stick with the top row for now, even though it's less convenient and for this first problem. How many centimeters are in 9.86 meters? So I want, what unit am I starting with? Centimeters or meters? The unit I'm starting with is, it's not necessarily the first one in the sentence, it is meters. And I would like to get centimeters. So the meters needs to be in the numerator or the denominator. The unit I'm starting with needs to be always in the denominator, correct? So that means I could use either of these unit conversions, either of these. And then the unit I want is in the numerator. So I'm gonna use this conversion factor right here. Again, please don't say, oh, I already know this. Trust me, this is about 25 to 30% of the first exam. 9.86 meters. So, I want to go from meters to centimeters, so I'll put 10 to the minus 2 meters is 1 centimeter. And cancel meters. And I do want to show you how to do this on the calculator. So um, let me pull up the calculator. So if it's 10 to the minus 2 meters, that would be the same as saying 1 times 10 to the minus 2, right? So that way you can put it in scientific notation. So here we go. I've got 9.86 times one, I don't need to put in times one, divided by one times 10 to the minus two. So that'd be divided by one second EE minus two. If you haven't watched the video on the calculator stuff that I posted, go back and watch it, okay? I posted that, what, Sunday? I think it was Sunday, good. And we get 986. Or if you had done it the other way, if you know that there's 100 centimeters in a meter, That would be easy to do in your head. Notice you always have to get the same answer. There's not more than one possible answer. The answer is 986 centimeters. Why does this work? Because these are equivalent, right? One over 10 to the minus two is 10 to the positive two, which is 100. This is all just um, arithmetic um, that you can do in your head. Hopefully. No, not everybody's as good as that. And I've been doing it for more years. But after a while, you get to the point where you can say, ah, if this is in the denominator, I can just pull it into the numerator. 10 to the by switching the sign, 10 to the positive 2. 10 to the positive 2 is 100. Any questions about this?
Which way did the unit go? From a bigger unit to a smaller unit or from a smaller unit to a bigger unit? Um, bigger. Bigger to smaller. Okay, it started bigger and went smaller, right? Meter is a much bigger unit than a centimeter. The number will always do the opposite, always. If you go from a bigger unit to a smaller unit, the number must do the opposite. So the number became bigger, right? But the unit itself became smaller, meter to centimeter, 9.86, 986. They have to counteract each other to be the same. Okay. Um, if you can remember to mute yourself when you're not talking, that would help. I, I, I keep hearing flipping pages here. All right, I'm going to go and hit uh, mute all. Feel free to unmute yourself when you want to participate, which I would like. Okay. How do we go from nanoseconds to milliseconds? The book has an excellent procedure for this. And it's something I think I'm gonna start requiring from now on. I know I require it in the problem set. So what I wanna do here is I wanna start with a map. A map is a plan of how we're going to go. We're starting with milliseconds. But in the SI system, I have no way of going directly from one unit with a prefix to another unit with a prefix. All I know how to do is to go from a unit with a prefix to getting rid of the prefix. See what I did here? I went from centimeters to meters. So what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna go from milliseconds to nanoseconds. I'm gonna go from milliseconds to Seconds. Seconds, good. And then in a second step, I'm going to go from seconds to? No, seconds. Yeah, so it just means I'm going to do two unit conversions chained together. All right, so let's write some equations to make sure that we know what we're doing here. So we need to know milliseconds and seconds. Now, the way I said I'm always gonna do this is I'm going to put a one in front of the unit with the prefix. So the unit with the prefix is the milliseconds or the seconds, it's the milliseconds, right? And then what the prefix means, I put on this side. So what does the prefix mean? It means 10 to the milli, milli? Minus six. Minus, that's micro. Milli is 10 to the minus? Three. Three, very good. And I also need to be able to go from seconds to nanoseconds. So which side is gonna get the one, the left or the right in this example? It's the side with the prefix, which is the nanoseconds, so that gets the one. And nano means 10 to the minus. Nine. Nine. Good. So we're starting with 2.83 milliseconds. 
we will call this our given. That's your starting material, your given. So that's where we're going to start. So we're going to go from milliseconds to seconds. That's what your map is telling you, your plan. So milliseconds needs to be in the denominator and seconds needs to be in the numerator. Notice I always do units first. That's gonna keep you honest and getting things correct. Always do the units first. And now we go over here, what was in front of milliseconds? It was a one. What was in front of seconds? 10 to the negative three. Okay. Now we want to get rid of seconds. So seconds goes in the denominator and nanoseconds goes in the numerator. So in front of seconds is 10 to the minus nine. And in front of nanoseconds is one. Before we even try to solve, make sure your units solved. Don't leave out the units. Don't ever leave out the units in this class. Don't. All right. So what units cancel? Milliseconds and milliseconds, because they're on opposite sides. What else cancels? Seconds. Seconds and seconds. Good. Um, I could ignore the ones because multiplying by one and dividing by one doesn't change anything. We should be able to do this in our head. So 2.83 times 10 to the minus three over 10 to the minus nine. Remember 10 to the minus three over 10 to the minus nine is what? That's 10 to the minus three minus minus nine, which is 10 to the positive Six. Six. Good. So uh, this is going to be 2.83 times 10 to the sixth nanoseconds. And so that's my final answer. Okay. Any questions about this? No? Okay. I want to show an alternate way of doing the notation, which I will use a lot. And which if you've taken high school chemistry, a lot of you probably have seen it. So I wanna copy that. Mm -hmm. It just makes things faster. It's not required, but I will use this a lot. And this is called railroad tracks. It's just a shorter way of notating this. Um, that means the same thing. So this was the equation we had, right? What people will usually do 
or chemists when they're doing long calculations, this is only three steps, but these easily can be five, six, seven steps, is instead of writing these all as fractions, is you just draw a single straight line. And all your numerators go on the top of the line and all your denominators go on the bottom of the line. So doing the same problem, we would have done it like this. 2.83 milliseconds. And then instead of typing times or writing in times, you just put in a straight line. Make it really straight. And that just means times and that the next fraction comes next. So the next fraction would be one millisecond is 10 to the minus three seconds. And then I wanna multiply that by the next one. So 10 to the minus nine seconds is one nanosecond. That's how I learned it when I was in school. Um, for those of you that had high school chemistry, uh, did any of your instructors or teachers use that? I think that's yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. I prefer it that way. I hope you guys don't mind. Um, it's just, I think, a quick and easier way. And I've written a handout that goes over this, but I, I think it's easy enough for people to see how it works. And so I prefer to do it that way. I would happily accept either way. Okay, but you'll notice this way takes up less space. And I think it's a little neater and a little more organized. The canceling works the same, millisecond over millisecond, second over second, you know. And so again, all you do is multiply everything in the numerator and then hit divide in front of everything in the denominator. So 2.83 times 10 to the negative three divided by 10 to the negative nine. And so that would still give you the same answer, which was what? 2.83 times 10 to the negative, uh, 10 to the positive. Six. Six nanoseconds. If you need more help with that, feel free to come talk to me. But I think this way will make things a little bit uh, quicker and easier. It doesn't really make things easier, but people think it does. So I'm happy to deal with that. Okay, it is very unusual um, in chemistry to encounter this next kind of problem, but sometimes you do have, well, not very unusual, but it's not as common. And that is when you have units on both sides. 60 miles per hour, for example, is a speed. So I wanna convert that to centimeters per second. So because there's units on both sides, we're gonna need our plan to have two sets of units. The difference here is if you wanna cancel something in the numerator, you put the unit you're starting with in the denominator. On the other hand, if you wanna cancel something that's, begin that's in the denominator, you just have to do the opposite. You put the unit you want in the denominator. Okay, so we're starting in what? Miles per hour. Never abbreviate miles. Why don't you want to abbreviate miles? You won't, can't use an M because M is meters. Yeah, don't abbreviate minutes as, for example, M either. Never use M for anything other than meters. Uh, meters. Yeah, in this context. M will have other meanings in other contexts. Okay, so we wanna get miles to centimeters. So forget the per for a minute for right now. We wanna get miles to centimeters. Yeah, and then the denominator, we wanna get hours to seconds. There's many ways to get from miles to centimeters. Many, many ways. You usually wanna use as few steps as you can and if possible, use all the exact numbers you can because that's the easiest. I think the easiest way, we don't know miles to centimeters. Um, 
But the way I'm gonna to wanna to do this is as follows. I'm gonna go from miles first to, well, what are some things that we can do with it? Let's look at our options. Where do we have miles here? We have miles to feet and kilometers. And we have miles to kilometers. You can use either one. Uh, I prefer to use an exact one if I have the choice. So I'm gonna use that one. Miles to feet. This one's not exact because I see the decimal. Okay. Miles to feet. Okay, now I'm in feet. What can I do with feet? I can go feet to yard, but that doesn't make sense. Probably not. I can go feet to inches. inches. And then I can go inches to centimeters. And this one's nice because everything is exact. So I'm gonna do it that way. So I'm gonna go from miles to feet, feet to inches, inches to centimeters. Okay. And I know all these by memory. You're not required to know all of these. Uh, all of these, you should know these two. One inch is 2.54 centimeters, one foot is 12 inches. I know I say on this page to memorize this one, but it's not really a big deal if you don't have it memorized. Um, so, but I have that one memorized. So I said I would go from miles to feet feet to inches, inches to centimeters. Now I know hours to seconds, but most people uh, probably don't off the top of their head. So, but what you can go from hours to days, that doesn't make sense, but you could go also from hours to minutes, minutes and then minutes to seconds. Yeah. So each arrow is a step. We're gonna have five steps in this problem. So we're gonna start with a number and then have five conversion factors. I'm not gonna write out all the equations because again, they were on the back uh, in, on that one page and I assume you know most of them. None of these are, the, are SI to SI conversions. These are all just plain old, mostly English conversions here. So this one is a little more straightforward. Miles per hour. Per hour means, per as we're gonna see, means for every one. This is very important. Write it in red. So whenever you see a per, this is how you translate it. 60 miles per hour would be written as 60 miles over one hour. Okay. So the only reason I bring that up is because there is a number there. It's one. 60 miles is equivalent to one hour. So let's get rid of miles first and get it to, to centimeters. So we're gonna convert according to our map miles to feet, right? So doing it with the units first, I wanna get rid of miles, so I put it in the denominator and feet in the numerator. That way I know they will cancel. All right, uh, if you remember from the equation, the equation said that one mile is 5,280 feet, exactly, by definition.
So that got rid of miles. If I stopped right now, I would know the answer in feet per hour, right? 60 times 50, 280, that would give me feet per hour. But that's not what I wanted. So let's continue. I want to go from feet to inches. So I have feet here. To inches. So I know that every one foot is 12 inches. So feet cancels feet. If I stopped, I now know the answer in inches per hour. And then this one, you will need to be absolutely sure you memorize. One inch is this one I never give you. You're required to know this one by memory. One inch is 2.54 centimeters exactly. Make absolutely sure you know that one. I don't know why I'm obsessed with you knowing that one, but I am. So we've got inches and inches cancels. Any questions so far? That was miles to feet, feet to inches, inches to centimeters. No? Okay. Now I don't wanna cancel centimeters, so I'm gonna leave that where it is. Now here's where the things get a little tricky. I need to convert hours to minutes, but hours is in the denominator. So that means to get rid of hours, I need to put hours in the numerator this time. So this is one of the cases where we have to work backwards, but it should make sense. I want to get rid of hours. So I put hours there and the unit I want is minutes. So what numbers go in front of each one? What goes in front of min uh, hours? In front of hours, I want a one. Good. Thank you. So good, Jacob. And in front of minutes, 60. If I want to cancel, I can. Hours cancels hours. Doesn't matter that they're right next to each other or not next to each other. And then finally, we want to go from minutes to seconds. And so we know that there are, in one minute, 60 seconds. You don't want to try to do this as five long problems that take up a lot of space. And I won't give you that. I won't give you enough space to do that either. You want to get used to doing this all in one step. And then let me cancel my last unit here. Minutes to minutes. This is literally the technique we use in this class, in Chem 130, in physical chemistry, in analytical chemistry. This is the technique everybody uses. So don't be the person who says, well, I'm going to do it my way. Mm -mm. This is the way we always do it. And if you don't like it, that's chemistry. It's just how we do it. Okay. It's, again, one of those cases, this is not a democracy. This is how we do it. Okay, so we've got a lot of numbers here. All the units canceled except for centimeters over seconds, which is exactly what we wanted. And the answer is obviously 14,000. No, I'm kidding. Um, I think it is actually, but that's because I've done this long enough. All right, how do we do this in our calculator? Multiply everything in the numerator except the ones. You can ignore the ones. And divide by everything in the denominator. Again, the logic for that I covered in my video that I posted um, the other night. So I'm going to put this in as 60 times 
5280. I could have canceled one of those 60s, right? So we've got a 60 and a 60 times 12 times 2.54 divided by 60 divided by 60. So multiply everything in the numerator, divide everything in the denominator. See, there we're going to be, I think it's 11,000 or 14,000. No, it's only 2,000. Maybe I'm confusing it with another question. So 60 times 5280 times 12 times 2.54 divided by 60, divided by 60. All right, and how many significant digits here? Two. Two, and that's because this had two, right? But everything else here was, these were all exact. Those were all exact. So that means we don't need to worry about them. So two. So how are we gonna write this with two significant digits? 2682, the easiest way would be to write it as 2682 in two significant digits would be probably 2700. That's the easiest way. And we don't wanna stick a decimal because that would make it have four significant digits. Or you could do it in scientific notation, which would be what? 2.5, 7 times 10 to the second power to the third power, right? Yeah, third power. Second centimeters per second. Either of those are perfectly acceptable answers. I'm sorry, but um, for the denominator, I actually multiplied 60 by 60. Is that okay? Uh, probably not. Did you? What did you get as an answer? I get the same answer. Oh, then you're fine. Did you put it in parentheses? No. Uh, so you put 60 times 5280 times 12 times 2.54 divided by 60 times 60? Yes. That shouldn't have worked. Let me show you. I mean, that, that won't work. Because if you put it that way, that would be 60 times 5280. Okay, doing what you said, right? And correct me if I'm wrong. Times 12 times 2.54, and then you did what? Divided by 60 times 60? Yes. No, that won't work. That's 96,000, so, I mean, that, or 9 million something. Uh-uh. Did you forget the first 60? Uh, no. Um, um... Just from my calculator, I guess I just multiplied the 60s first, then I divided it. That would work. But here, let me just really quickly show you why this doesn't work. Um, well, actually, go back and look at the, that video I posted, and it explains why. The, the way you did it here would only work if you put the denominator in, in what? In parentheses. If you already did it before and said 60 times 60 is 3,600, then that works because you already um, you already did the mental math. You already did it. Oh, okay. Because okay. that's what you did is you changed it to 3,600, right? Yes. Then it works. But you'd have to put the whole denominator in parentheses. Trust me, the easiest way to do it is, and you'll always get it right, is multiply the numerators and divide by all the, the, everything in the denominator and ignore the ones because you don't need to do anything with the ones. Okay, that will always work. Other questions? All right, at this point, you should have noticed uh, that the units can be divided out just like X's or numbers. See, feet over feet cancels. Never ever do feet times feet cancels. Feet times feet never cancels, right? 
feet times feet is what? Feet squared. Feet squared. And what kind of a unit is feet squared? When would you use square feet for what kind of a measurement? Area. Area. Yeah. Square feet is area. Good. So please remember the units have to be on opposite sides to cancel. And when units are dissimilar, like feet and pounds, you can actually come up with new what we call derived units. But you, oftentimes you want to avoid that. There is such a thing as a foot pound. Three feet times two pounds. Uh, this is a unit of um, work, if I remember right, because that's uh, force equals mass times accelerate. No, that's this is work. Yeah, foot pounds. So sometimes you see weird units like that but we're not gonna be using those right now. Now, to be very clear, you may only add and subtract measurements with the same units. Most of our unit conversions are multiplications and divisions, but adding and subtracting must be the same. In other words, it's, it makes no sense to say $4 plus seven pencils, right? That doesn't make any sense unless you somehow or another converted pencils into a dollar value or dollars into a pencil value. You can't add dissimilar units, all right? Hence the phrase, you can't add apples and oranges, okay? You can convert them to fruit and call them fruit and add them together. Two apples plus three oranges is five fruit, but you can't say that you have five apples or five oranges, okay? So before adding or subtracting, Always make sure that the measurements have the same units. And that means they must be the same type of measurement. And let me add to that another very important restriction. If they are in the science, same, if they are in scientific notation, convert them to the same power of 10 before adding or subtracting. I'll try to do some examples of those later. Otherwise you won't get the sig digs right. Okay, as you I'm sure know already from geometry and other classes even before geometry, uh, getting from length to area involves squaring the units. Um, so for example, if you're asked to find the area of a square, what is the area of a square? It's the length of a side times the length of a side for a rectangle, correct? And a square is of course a special rectangle where the sides are the same length. So it's just side squared. So five centimeters times five centimeters is 25 centimeters squared. That's not too hard, but let's say we wanna convert that to square units. Whenever I'm using square units, I'm gonna to tend to not use railroad tracks. I wanna do it this way because there's reasons for it as you'll see here. Okay. So if I have 25 centimeters squared, Remember the equation for centimeters to meters. Remember the way I said I was gonna do this was a one in front of the unit with the prefix and what the prefix means on the other side. Prefix centi means 10 to the minus two. Right? So a centimeter is 10 to the minus two meters. But this doesn't work when you're dealing with squared units. One centimeter squared is not 10 to the minus two 
meters squared. For this to work, you have to square both sides of the equation. So you have to square both sides, everything for this to work. The left side is very easy. One squared is one centimeter times centimeter is centimeter squared. But here's where people mess up. You have to square this. Uh, what is 10 to the A all to the B power? How do we do that algebraically? This is a law of algebra. It is what? 10 to the... Sorry, let me rewrite that. A times B. Yeah. Yeah. The, the way the world, the, uh, it works in algebra is X to the A to the B power is X to the A times B. Good. So 10 to the negative two squared is 10 to the negative four. So please notice that you had to square both sides. Actually, yeah, I could use a, if I do it this way, then I can do it either as a railroad track or like this. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy my numbers over. Uh, one centimeter squared is? Denominator? Uh, 10 to the negative four meters squared. Okay. And so we can cancel out centimeters squared with centimeters squared. And so what is this? That's 25 times, oops, 25 times 10 to the negative four is 2.5 times 10 to the negative three, right? Let me make sure I've got that right. I move the decimal here to the left. That makes this 10 times smaller. This needs to be 10 times larger. So 10 to the negative four becomes 10 to the negative three meters squared. The same thing with uh, with volume. Let me just do a real quick volume problem. Um, as far as volume goes, first of all, there are dedicated units for volume, liters and milliliters. Those are never cubed, okay? There's no such thing as liters cubed. That would be nine dimensional. So this is that. The other way you could measure volume is length times length times length, which would be a cubed distance, a cubed distance. So a liter is, um, is, can be represented like this. Two equations to know. A milliliter equals a cubic centimeter. Don't worry about cc's, I'll never use cc's. They use that in medicine. Also, you should know that a liter is not a cubic meter. A lot of people assume that incorrectly. A liter is a cubic decimeter. All right. So these are useful conversions. So let me just do this last problem and then we'll be done uh, for today. So a rectangular block is 14.6 inches by 7.2 inches by 6.8 inches. 
What is its volume in centimeters cubed? First of all, how do I find the volume of a rectangular block? It's going to be the length times the width times height. height. And I don't know which one of these is length and width times height. I just know that the volume is going to be all three of these together. Okay. So that's going to be 14.6 inches times 7.2 inches times 6.8 inches. So 14.6 times 7.2 times 6.8. Syntax error. What do you mean syntax error? Do that again. 14.6 times 7.2 times 6.8. Uh, I'm getting 715. Is that what you're getting? Right? Um, now, I don't want to round off until I get to the final answer. So that's going to be about 714.8. And I'm going to make a note to myself. How many sig digs do I get in this answer? Three times two times two. So even though I haven't written it with two sig digs, I'm gonna make a note here that I only am allowed two sig digs. So I'll have to round to two sig digs at the end. And what's the unit? It's not inches, it's inches. Inch cubed. times inch times inch, inch cubed, good. So this is the shortcut for writing two significant digits. I'm just gonna draw a line over the first two. So that's a way of reminding me I only have two significant digits. The rest are junk that I'll worry about later on. Okay, and now I need to convert that to centimeters cubed. How am I gonna do that? We know that one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. So what do I need to do? I need to Cube both sides, good. So one inch cubed is, and I don't care what that number is, 2.54 cubed centimeters cubed. I'll let the calculator worry about it. So doing my conversion here. Write my line here. This means it's only the first two digits are significant. You don't want to round until the very end. So I always keep an extra couple digits first. So we have every one inch cubed is 2.54 cubed centimeters cubed. All right. So let me be very clear on how this gets done then in the calculator. So going back, because I didn't do it on this calculator, I had 14.6 times 7.2 times 6.8, and I hit equals, right? Now I wrote this thing down here. This is just my showing my work. I'm not going to round this number at all. I'm gonna let the calculator keep that number, okay? And so I will now say that number times, 
See, I don't retype it in. The calculator writes answer. It's saving the old answer times 2.54. And how do I write to the third power? You say caret sign three. What will the calculator do first, multiplication or exponents? If you remember PEMDAS, it does first parentheses, there are none, then it does exponents. So it'll do the exponent first. I don't care what that number is. Then it'll multiply by there. And I think this is the one that gives you 11,000. Yeah, this is the one that gives you 11,000. Good. Okay. So 11,713 centimeters cubed, and we need to get that to the right number of significant digits. So what is the right number of significant digits? We said two. two. So two significant digits. So one, one. So now we're going to round. The seven means we need to round up. So this will be. 12,000 with no parentheses or no, uh, no uh, decimal place, sorry. Or in scientific notation, what would that be? 1.2 times 10 to the fourth. Very good. 1.2 times 10 to the fourth centimeters cubed. Okay.